This is Henry Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. This is my grandson, Henry. We came down here to visit my son who lives in Chattanooga and we drove up along the Tennessee River to this escarpment of the Cumberland Plateau where Henry earlier this year found a very rare and hardly ever seen green salamander. And I asked him, Henry, could you take me to where you found that salamander? And Henry was like, yes. So today we're gonna start searching for this green salamander and I hope we get lucky and find one. And this episode will be all about the green salamander, why it's endangered in many places, why it's here in its amazing, very, very restricted habitat that it likes on these limestone cliffs. So stay tuned for this episode of Nature at Your Door with my grandson, Henry. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. This is part one of a two-part episode on green salamanders. My son and I actually started our day belaying each other and taking turns rock climbing on this sandstone cliff that is carved out of the Cumberland Plateau by the Tennessee River. Later, we picked up my grandson Henry and he led us up to this waterfall where he found the green salamander just last January. This was such an amazing find and we hope to find another one today. The waterfall was a key marker to where the area was that he found this salamander. The green salamander is a striking species, but it's rarely seen. It lives on these rocky cliffs and rocky areas that have lots and lots of crevices. Its color blends in with the lichens, which are also grow on these rocks. Even the pattern on their backs resembles lichens. Its flattened body and square toe tips are perfect for living on rock faces and in these crevices of often sandstone and limestone cliffs. It actually has a prehensile tail, which means it can actually grab onto and hang onto things. And it's been observed sometimes in the crevices of bark on trees, and it seems to have some arboreal characteristics to him as well. So why are these species at risk of being endangered? And it's because they're very, very habitat specific. There's not a lot of habitat like this. So the places it can live are limited to begin with. Furthermore, removal of vegetation and herbicides near these our outcrops are big no-nos for this species. They're rarely seen because they spend most of their time in these rock crevices. To find them, you have to look into the rock crevices, often using a light. It's such an unusual habitat requirement. This location here in Marion County is an ideal habitat for green salamanders. It's just a few miles from the city of Chattanooga and these sandstone rock faces are a unique home to these very habitat-specific salamanders. Abundant cracks and crevices shaded by trees provide the structural habitat, humidity, required by these elusive salamanders. Peering into the crevices with lights, it may reveal them in their hidden homes. Green salamanders will go into hibernation in the winter and withdraw deep inside these crevices. And like other plethodon salamanders in this group, green salamanders are lungless and breathe through their sensitive, moist skin. So Henry has something to tell us about that. It's very important if you're going to pick up a salamander, you need to wet your hands first. All right? It's really fun and enjoyable and exciting to look for salamanders. But Henry reminds us about being good stewards as we're out doing that. It is very important when you turn over a rock that you put it exactly right back where it's cut. It 
We had an amazing time searching for green salamanders together. Among the species we found was this zigzag salamander that has a very unique pattern on its back that gives it its distinctive name. We found several slimy salamanders that are likely to be the northern slimy salamander species. Slimy salamanders get their name because they do release a lot of slime and it can be very, very sticky, almost like glue as it dries. I have an episode that you need to see about slimy salamanders. We found this handsome Desmonathes salamander, likely to be a dusky, but it's very difficult to identify the exact species in this group without a lot of experience and knowledge. Here, I'm out of my usual area, so all these salamanders look different and were amazing to me. Even consulting county occurrence maps are critical to identifying these species because there's so many variations and they look so much similar to other species in their same group. We also found several of these beautiful seal salamanders as well. Seal salamanders have this unique leopard spotting or reticulated pattern. They have a light colored belly with salt and pepper markings. We also found this beautiful juvenile seal salamander with its unique mar markings. Unfortunately, we were not able to find a green salamander today, but that didn't spoil our experience at all. So that will also necessitate a part two episode of the green salamander where we're going to go back and we're going to find one. My channel's all about nature, all the cool things you can find outside, going outdoors and exploring and discovering things. Connecting with nature is a great family activity for all ages. Engaging people and teaching about nature and learning about nature is one of the best ways we can help protect our environment. Well, this has been a really fun day with my grandson. We've been out turning over rocks and it was exciting to find so many different salamanders. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door and please subscribe to my channel. It helps me spread education to a lot more people if you do that. And give me a like and if you've got any questions, leave me a question in the comments. I love answering questions to my viewers. I always read them and I get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks again for watching Nature at Your Door on the side of the Tennessee River here in the southern eastern part of Tennessee.